Hi guys and welcome to today's video on stem and leaf plots. This is a year nine video on stem and leaf plots, which to be perfectly honest with you, if you've watched the year eight one, you're not going to learn way more other than how to do back and back. It is really good to see you. Hopefully you are well. You are here to learn what a stem and leaf plot is and how to draw a back to back one and how to read mean and medians and modes and ranges from all this thing, aren't you? Yes, you are, but I very much doubt you've chosen to do this, have you? You are being forced by someone standing over you. No, hopefully not. Guys, I'm Darren, Maths Guru, and it's really good to see you. If you're new, there is a red arrow over there, which if you could click on it and subscribe and actually ask a couple of your friends to subscribe as well, I would be deeply, deeply grateful. It's only me sitting in a room talking to myself, which to be perfectly honest with you, is actually quite weird. But hopefully you'll understand. Now, if we see, I'm gonna get smaller and the screen is gonna get darker. And what we can see here is, as I say, we're dealing with stem and leaf plots. Now, by the end of this lesson, hopefully you'll know what a stem and leaf plot is, how to draw them, how to draw back-to-back -back ones, how to read them, and how to start to describe the shape. Now, this all builds on previous videos and, and other videos that are available on my YouTube channel and, in fact, mathsguru.com. So go on over there, click, and sort of have a look around. Maybe you'll find a video that actually uh, is on something that you don't understand at this moment in time. Now, we're dealing with uh, data in this particular section of videos or the series of videos now about how to describe it and how to order it and how to make it look pretty and actually to mean something. And a great one for being able to do that is in fact a stem and leaf diagram. So we've looked at measures of center, we've looked at measures of spread and I always think of a stem and leaf diagram as like a tree. Here is my stem and here are my leaves, right? So we have one number with lots of other numbers coming off of it. And I'm sure you remember stem and leaf diagrams from my previous video, but first things first, to be able to decide what's a stem and what's a leaf of a number, we sort of have to understand how to split these up. Now 23 can actually be split up with two and a line and a three. Now in this situation here, the two becomes our stem and the three becomes our leaf. Now we're only ever permitted to have one leaf. There's only ever one number after the sort of the stem. And we'll explain what that means in a moment. 236 can therefore be split into two, three with the line and the six. Now in this situation, 23 becomes the stem and just the number six becomes the leaf. Do you notice again, just one number as the leaf. 10.6 can be split up into 10 with a line and a six. Now. In that, you've got to think that there might be a problem. Again, the 10 becomes my stem, the six becomes my leaf, but we've lost my decimal point. Well, how do you think the number 106 is written? Well, actually, again, 10 with a line and a six, but I've just told you that 10.6 is also written with 10, a line, and a six. And actually, the biggest thing, the most important part of a stem leaf diagram is its key because that tells you whether the numbers we're dealing with are 106 or 10.6. So don't forget to do the key, and I'll show you a little bit more about that in a moment. Well, actually, let's do it now by constructing a stem and leaf plot. First things first, when we are doing this, if you remember that to create a stem and leaf plot, you're advised to create what we call an unordered stem and leaf plot first. Just take the data and bang it in the stem and leaf plot and then put it in order. Why do we need it in order? Well, to find things like the mode and the median and the range, we have to put our data in order. And it's just as easy to put it in a stem and leaf diagram and order it as it is if we were to write them all out in numbers and put them in orders as well. So this question here has been extracted from the Cambridge Essential Textbook series. Thank you so much, Cambridge, for allowing me to use your examples. You guys rock. So happy. So what it says is, consider this set of data, all decimals. One, organize the data into an ordered stem and leaf plot. Now, to be able to do this, we need to answer a number of questions. Firstly, what numbers are going to go in my stem? That's actually the critical port, uh, critical point. So if we look at the numbers, we've got 0 0.3, which we now know can be written as 0, 0.3. We've got 2.5, which can be written 2 with a 5. So to be able to help us do this, what we actually need to do is look for our lowest number, and our highest number in our data set. Well, the lowest number seems to be 0 0.1, looking at that. Highest number, I've got 6.3. Can we see anything higher than a 6.3? Yes, yeah, 6.8. 7.5, wow. All right, 7.5 seems to be my highest. Now, it's no big deal if I find a higher one. But now we know that we're gonna put our stem numbers going between zero and seven. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. 
Now, having got that, the rest of it becomes relatively simple. So, as the question says here, let's create an unordered stem and leaf plot. So, we've said the numbers are all zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, I'm going to leave a little bit of gap down there just in case, and let's rub this off to stop us getting confused. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of those individual numbers and transfer it into my stem and leaf plot. Now I'm not going to do all of it, but what I'm going to do is do some of them, show you how to do it, and then sort of fade away and fade back, and you'll be able to see the completed one. So the first thing we we'll gonna do is look at the number 0 0.3. And if you remember, we know that 0 0.3 is the same as 0 with a line and a 3, so I'm going to put a 3 here. Then I'm going to cross it through. Why am I going to cross it through? My brain gets confused with this sort of stuff if I don't do it in order. So then 2.5 is 2.5, not 25, 4.1 goes there. 3.7 goes there. 2.0, ooh, that goes there. 3.3 goes there. 4.8 goes there. And do you see how I'm doing this? Number by number, working across the rows and doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry this on and fade out. And fade back in again. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. There is my completed unordered stem and leaf plot. Oh, must make sure I cross up that 1.0. So I've got all of my data in there. And the reason it's unordered is if we read across those rows now, what do we notice? Well, the numbers aren't in any particular order. So what do we now do? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I know this seems a bit weird, but we now create an ordered stem and leaf plot. Now, when I actually do this uh, in a lesson, what you'll notice is I've actually got the second stage and I've got some space below. But I think in this situation, I'm actually going to order it now, but I'm going to do it beside. So there's my line and I've got my number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. And what am I now going to do? Put all of my numbers in order. And by that, I literally mean just go across line by line. So I've got 3, 1, which if I put it in order is 1, 3. And then I have 0, 0, 1, and 4. Uh, 0, 3, 3, 4, and 5. We've got 0, 3, 3, 4, and 7. And then we get 1, 1, 1, 4, 6, 8. Almost done. 2, 7, 8. Three, eight, and five, and there we go, we are done. Yes, thank you very much, we have finished. No, we haven't, because ladies and gentlemen, if you remember, one of the most important parts of a stem and leaf diagram is the key. So as it actually turns out, what I should have done below that, even that unordered stem and leaf plot was put a key. And how do I do that? And I literally, well, I just go key. I just choose a number, two, line five equals 25. Uh, sorry, even I'm getting confused now, equals, 2.5 because my data has decimal points. So again, I can now write a key under here. I can choose a completely different number, 7 line 5 equals 7.5. But I've now taken my stem and leaf diagram and turned it into something that's actually really, really helpful to me. So there we go. There's my stem and leaf diagram ordered. Thank you very much. Now the next part of the question says, well, can you now find the median for me? Oh, of course we can find the median, but actually I need that data back. So let's bring my data back. And there we go. There is my stem and leaf diagram back. I want to find the median. How do I find the median? Well, the median is my middle number. And so I need to go through this and work out what my middle number is. Easiest way to do that is cross numbers off the ends until I meet in the middle. So one, two, three, four, five, and six off the front. One, two, three, four, five, six off the back. One, two, three, four off the front. One, two, three, four off the back. One, two, three off the front. One, two, three off the back. And ladies and gentlemen, what do I notice? I have two middle numbers. So what am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for halfway between three and four, aren't I? Well, we know that. That's okay, because it's 3.5. So my median must be 3.5. Yes. Because sadly, I've just made a really common mistake. I haven't read my diagram properly. I haven't read my stem and leaf diagram properly because actually that number there is 3.3 and 3.4. What's halfway between those two? Now, there's actually lots of ways of doing this. I can add the two numbers together and divide by two. I tend to do this. I tend to think, of, well, let's add a zero on the end of both of these numbers because I can do that. Place value allows me to add as many zeros on the end as I like. Because why am I going to do this? Well, I'm looking at this now reads 30 and now reads 40. And our brain seemed to compute much easier halfway between 30 and 40. So halfway between 30 and 40 is 35. And so ladies and gentlemen, 
My median is 3.35. Give a whoop whoop. And there we go. So the fourth step, find the mode by reading which is the most common data item. So looking at this, which appeared to be the most common data item. Now, sadly, I have put lines through all of those things. But if we were to scroll up and have a look at the uh, actual semi-leaf plot I did here, which number do we see appearing the most? Well, if I were you, hopefully you were noticing that we actually have three of those ones there. So one is my most important number or my mode, yes? No. Again, read the data properly because it's actually 4.1. And ladies and gentlemen, just by reading off that graph, I can now say that my mode would be equal to 4.1 because it's the most common value, the one that there's most of. Now, finally, the question says, look at this distribution and decide on the shape. Now, do you remember back to a video in year eight work that talked about whether it was skewed or symmetrical? Now, let's just do a very quick recap. If it's skewed, sorry, if it's symmetrical, it's roughly speaking even on either side. You can draw a line through the middle and it's roughly speaking even on either side. If it's skewed, it's very definitely more one way or very definitely the other way. So those are the two versions of skewed. If we look at the data in the stem and leaf diagram, it doesn't actually look really, really apparent, does it? It's a bit confusing, actually. It's like, well, I don't know. Uh, how do I describe the shape? Well, actually, the first thing you can do is you can sort of just go and draw on this thing like that. Now, that's not great. And you're going to say, but it's on its side. Well, what I'm going to say to you is, well, why don't we turn it through 90 degrees? So I'm actually going to take that picture and turn it through 90 degrees. And then what do we get? We get something that goes like that. If I draw a line through the center, does it look roughly even either side? Absolutely. And so I would describe that data as symmetrical. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that was the exciting stuff. That was drawing a standard stem leaf plot and using it to find medians and modes. Could have found a range as well, but we didn't. We now move on to the idea of constructing a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot. Now, back-to-back -back stem and leaf dot plots are fabulous because what it allows us to do is compare two sets of data on just one stem and leaf plot. How on earth do we do this? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it just so happens that Cambridge are allowing me to use the question again. Very excited. And basically, a shop owner has two jeans shops. Weird, but okay. The daily sales in each shop over a 16-day period are monitored and recorded as shown below. So what we're trying to say is there's 16 data items here, and there's 16 data items there. And it wants us to do some sort of an analysis by A, drawing a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot with an interval of 10. Huh? What's an interval of 10 mean? Well, if we go back, what it's actually saying is we go back to that example a moment ago where we had 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, these are all decimal numbers. So what you would argue here is that these would have an interval of 1 because that was basically 1.1 to 2.3. That's effectively a whole number interval of 1. When it has an interval of 10, what we're actually saying is that effectively the numbers 0 to 9 go in the first one, 10 to 19 go in the second, 20 to 29 go in the third, and so on. It's just a way of helping us split up our data. What does it by mean a compare and comment in part B? We'll come back to that in a moment. So first things first, I'm going to draw my back to back stem and leaf diagram. What is my lowest number in shop A? It is 3. My highest number is 28. My lowest number in shop B is 4. My highest number is 27. And as it turns out, that actually now means that I'm going to draw a double line like that. And the numbers are just 0, 1, and 2 because we're looking for the lowest number being three and the highest number being four. I'm going to put shop A on this side and I'm going to put shop B on this side and I'm going to start to create my stem leaf diagram. Now, interestingly, same process as we did before. Shop A has got a three, so there's three. 12, 12, so we do 12 and 12 and 13, 14, 14, 15 and 15. So this is nice and easy because these are actually in order for me crossing these through so that my computer actually crosses them through. Then we get 21, 22, 24, 24, 24, 26, 27, and 28. So I've now put all of my shop A onto my stem leaf diagram. How do I do my shop B? Well, believe it or not, I just do the data going the other way. So in this situation, there is my value of four, 
and 6 and 6 and 7 and 7 and 8 and 9 and 9. Now obviously I've run out of space here, but you're going to be able to do this much, much simpler. So now we're going to go 10, 12, 13, 14, 14, 16 and 17 and then 27. And ladies and gentlemen, there is my stem and leaf diagram done. Yes, because what have I forgotten? I have forgotten my key and it's very important to say the key and so 2 with a line and a 7 is equal to 27 and because we know that we're dealing with genes we'll say 27 pairs of genes. There we go, there is my shop A and shop B and my back to back stem leaf pot because they're literally back to back. Right, so uh, draw it, we've done that interval of 10 and again do you notice what we're saying is these numbers were effectively standing those gaps were an interval of 10. We were going from 10, uh, 0 to 9, 10 to 19, 20 to 29. What does it mean by compare and comment on differences between the sales made by the two shops? Well, it just wants you to look and say, well, okay, a moment, let's pull out some key data. Right, so let's have a look at uh, shop A. We knew that the range from shop A was equal to the biggest number, which is 28, minus the smallest number, which is 3, which is 25 pairs of genes. What about my range for shop B? Well, we've got the lowest value was 4, and my highest value was 27, so 27 minus 4 gives me 23. So actually, they sold, roughly speaking, the same range of genes. But what do we notice about shop A in comparison to shop B? Well, shop B, if I was to draw the data, seems to look like this in terms of where their data is, and shop A seems to be like this. So we would seem to be able to describe that. Shop A had positively skewed data, and shop B had negatively skewed data, or that shop A sold fewer numbers of genes, whereas shop B sold more number of genes, all sorts of stuff you can do. It doesn't really matter. Two pieces of information from this and you are done. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that's about it for this year nine video on stem and leaf plots. Much of this is a recap of what you've done before. Much of it uh, towards the end is sort of new, just putting together back to back. It's great seeing you. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already done so, over there is a circly thing to subscribe. Below it is a video in this series that hopefully you'll enjoy watching. Uh, otherwise, I'm pretty much done. Again, if you can subscribe, greatly appreciate it. Get some friends. Uh, otherwise, you have an awesome day. Really good to see you. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you next time. All right, take care, guys. Mass Guru, out.